Hi, I'm John DeSteiger, president of Oklahoma Christian University. We love having special guests on campus, and today we are blessed beyond belief. We have Lee and Leslie Strobel with us on campus. Lee is a best-selling author, has a great, great story. Lee, thanks for being here with us. John, I'm, I'm so pleased to be with you. What a beautiful campus. Enjoyed my time so far. Looking forward to other events today. Well, thank you. We're, you're going to be speaking in chapel here yes. in a few minutes to our entire student body. You're going to be meeting with our uh, symposium students at lunch, and then tonight, a public lecture. We will have a packed out Hardeman Auditorium for that. I'm so, looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Thanks for being a part of this. Sure. So, Lee, I, I uh, want to ask a few questions. Yeah. Um, tell me about growing up. Did you grow up in a, in a household that, that had Christian faith in it? Well, my parents were members of a uh, Missouri Senate Lutheran Church. Um, uh, I'd say nominal believers. Uh, they took me to church some when I was a child um, and sort of left it to me what I wanted to do when I got into high school. When I, you know, when I was a freshman in high school, it's like, whatever you decide, that'll be fine. And that's when I really began to walk away from any kind of uh, belief. I, I see. So high school days and college years as well. Yeah, it was really three steps for me in atheism. The first step was junior high school or middle school when I began to ask those kind of embarrassing questions that middle school students ask, like, how can there be a loving God if there's so much pain in the world? And how can God send people to hell and stuff like that? And there was nobody really to engage with that. And so I concluded, well, there are no good answers. And that was my first step. Second step was freshman year of high school when I took biology. And uh, I was told that um, uh, neo-Darwinism explains the origin and diversity of life. So God's out of a job. And then third step, uh, at the University of Missouri, where I took a course on uh, the historical Jesus from a skeptic, mm. and he convinced me you can't trust the Gospels and what they wow. say about Jesus. So those were sort of the three steps that really cemented me into my atheism. Wow. Now, something special kind of happened that plays a very important part of the story later. Yeah. When you were 14 years of age, yeah. what, what happened when you were 14? Yeah, uh, I was walking down the street in downtown Chicago, and I saw a friend of mine and uh, he came over and, and uh, he introduced me to a girl he was with named Leslie. And um, we kind of looked at each other. It was love at first sight. Leslie went home and told her mom, I met the boy I'm going to marry. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, we got married young. I was 20. She was 19. And uh, even in those days, uh, the drinking age was 21 in Illinois. So we had champagne glasses full of milk and, at our wedding. <laughs> Too young to drink alcohol. But... Old enough, apparently, to get married. Right, right. And so, uh, yeah, so we got married 45 years ago. Wow, congratulations. Thank that, you. That's, a, that's really <laughs> a great thing. So I love your books, love the movie that came out last spring, also The Case for Christ. Um, so did Leslie grow up with a church mm -hmm. background? Um, her dad was a skeptic, <clears throat> and her mom had a, uh, grew up in the Presbyterian Pre um, uh, Scottish church. She was from Scotland. They, she was a war bride. And... Um, she, her mom never learned to drive, and so couldn't bring her to church, and her dad was a skeptic and atheist. And uh, so what she would do is at night when she would tuck Leslie in, she would sing her a hymn or maybe pray with her. But there was no real church involvement, and um, that was the extent to which she was exposed to Christianity growing up. Okay. So a young couple gets married yeah. deeply in love, yeah. but faith is not Yeah, I was part. By that time, I was an atheist. She was agnostic. I say agnostic. I would say spiritually confused. Okay. She didn't understand how things fit together, and she probably had some vague faith, but um, I call her an agnostic because she didn't know what she really believed. Early in your all's marriage, she came to faith. She did. That's Can, right. Tell me about that, and tell me how you reacted to that. Well, um, there was a neighbor who was a, uh, a nurse, a Christian nurse, who became best friends with Leslie. Mm. And uh, we had kids the same age, and so they would sit around, they would talk, and of course, her name was Linda. In the movie, it's Alfie, which uh, used a different name. And um, uh, it was very natural for Linda to share her faith with Leslie, because God was such an important part of Linda's mm. life. And Leslie wasn't hostile. She was curious and um, went to church with her, asked questions. And then, and the scene in the movie is so accurate. Leslie told me that she had come to faith. We were in our kitchen, and the first word that went through my mind was divorce. I, I was just going to walk out. I didn't want to be married to a Christian. Uh, I thought she had been got involved with a cult, wow. and uh, I just had no interest in it. I didn't want her to change. Uh, but, you know, I stuck around. And I began to see positive changes in her character and values and the way she related to me and the kids. And, and that was winsome and that was attractive. 
But at the same time, I wanted the old Leslie back, you know? And, right. and, and so I, I had this, this pull and this push, you know? I, I was kind of being attracted toward this, the positive aspects of the way her life was changing. But at the same time, it was impinging on my life because I was living a very immoral and drunken and profane and narcissistic and self-absorbed and, and really self-destructive kind of a life. Uh, what people saw was me winning awards for investigative reporting at the Chicago Tribune, where I was legal editor. What they didn't see was the other side, which was me literally drunk in the snow in an alley on Saturday night. Mm. So there was a lot of these kind of dynamics going on. And what happens, it's very interesting, because here she is, a new believer in Christ. Her life is changing. Uh, she's following Jesus. She, she's living a holier life. And she wasn't shaming me. She wasn't um, um, judging me. But just me watching this accentuated the difference between her life and my life. Wow. And the sin that corroded my soul and, and corrupted me became more evident. And I didn't like it. I like to think of myself as a great guy. But in contrast now to my wife, I'm, my sin is becoming in stark contrast. And I didn't wow. want it. And, and it made me angry. It made me mad. And that scene in the movie where I literally knocked over a planter, right. what I really did, and they couldn't afford to shoot this in the movie, but I literally kicked the hole through the living room wall uh, out of rage um, because she had been going to church. So, uh, you know, there was a lot of um, uh, turmoil uh, in our relationship when she was the believer and I was still the skeptic. Wow, wow. Lee, when did, so when did you decide, hey, I'm going to I'm going to disprove this thing. I'm going to do some research. I'm going to disprove this. I'm going to get my old list. Yeah. Back. Well, uh, it was a Sunday morning. I was sleeping off a hangover, and she was getting ready to go to church. And she looked at me, and she said, uh, why don't you come to church with me today? And I thought, you know, I'm going to go and get her out of this cult that she's involved in. You know, I'm rescue her from this thing. I said, but I'm going to bring my reporter's notebook because I'm going to find a scandal, and that way I can expose the scandal, and I'll get a front-page byline and everything. So she brought me to a church, and I heard the gospel for the first time. And here I was, almost 30 years old, never really understood the gospel, and was articulated in a way, I get it. Of course, I didn't believe it, but at least I got it. And I thought, okay, um, I get it, um, but I don't believe it. But if it's true, it has huge implications for my life. Mm. And so that's when I decided to take my journalism training and my legal training and investigate uh, Christianity. And I did it with the underlying hope that I could disprove it. Um, but being a journalist, mm. I wanted to call a ball a ball and a strike a strike. So I said, I'm going to be as, as honest in this investigation. I'm going to look at both sides. I'm going to be thorough. Uh, I'm not going to go in biased. I hope I can rescue her out of this but I'm going to look at both sides. And so I launched what turned out to be a nearly two-year investigation of the evidence. What, was there an aha moment mm. during that two-year period when it clicked and yeah. you said, hey, this, this is very reasonable, or maybe even this is more than reasonable to yeah. believe? Well, I, I realized that the resurrection was the key um, um, because Jesus, I saw as I, as I read the accounts, uh, claimed to be... Uh, uh, the Messiah. He, he claimed to be the Son of God. He, he, um, uh, he made transcendent claims about himself and so forth. But anybody could do that. You could do that. I could do that. But if he claimed to be the Son of God, died, and then three days later rose from the dead, it's pretty good evidence mm. he's telling the truth. So I figured the resurrection is the key. So I spent a lot of my focus during that investigation on the issue of the resurrection. And uh, it all came down to that aha moment on November the 8th of 1981, uh, about two in the afternoon when I, I kind of reviewed all the evidence, and, and I looked at it, and, and, and I stepped back and I said, wait a minute, in light of the avalanche of evidence that points so powerfully toward the truth of Christianity, I realized it would take more faith to maintain my atheism than to become a Christian. Wow. And that's when I realized that based on the historical data, I was convinced that Jesus not only claimed to be the Son of God, he backed it up by returning from the dead. Um, and then I realized that wasn't enough. I had to receive Jesus as my forgiver and leader, as my Lord and Savior. I had to receive the free gift of grace that he purchased on the cross when he died as my substitute to die for all of my sins and to pay for my sin. And um, when I received the gift of grace, then I would become a child of God. 
So um, I took that step, and, and then like Leslie, my life, my values, my character, my relationships, my priorities, my philosophy, my worldview, my parenting, uh, all these things over time mm. uh, began to change for the good. So, so that, that, I, I'm fascinated that you remember the time, yeah. the date, the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. November, say November. November the 8th of 1981. In, in the afternoon. Yeah, two in the afternoon. That's when... It all crystallized. It crystallized then. Did you then, did, did it still take you a while to decide, okay, I'm really going to do this, or was that the time? That was it. I mean, I was baptized uh, shortly thereafter, I, um, um, and as I became part of a, uh, a church that, and learned to worship, as I learned to read the Bible with fresh eyes, as I learned to pray, uh, then like Leslie, my life began to change for wow. the good as well. Um, and it was really a reflection and an answer to prayer that Leslie had been praying for two years uh, because her friend had given her a verse, Ezekiel 36, 26, back when I was this hard-drinking, immoral, living atheist. Um, and the verse says, uh, Moreover, I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Mm. And so that whole two years that I'm on this investigative journey, Leslie behind the scenes every day is praying this verse for me. And, um, you know, if you ask me what really led me to faith, was it all this data that I discovered or was it a faithful wife who prayed? Um, I'd probably vote for Leslie. Yeah, Leslie. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, I, I, one, one final question, Lee, and boy, I'm so grateful that you're here and, and what, a great, uh, what a great testimony you have. Uh, how encouraging is mm. this? Uh, a lot of young people, uh, are, are not raised in the faith or are raised in the faith, but, but they hit a period of time early in their adulthood. They go off to college or whatever, and, and their faith weakens. Sometimes yeah. it goes away. Yeah. Not true of everybody, but yeah. certainly a lot of folks. Yeah. What, what advice or insight or wisdom do you have for, for all of us, but especially for our, our young men and young women who um, are beginning to, to doubt mm -hmm. or, or harbor doubts about what they believe. Yeah. You know, one of the top six reasons uh, research has shown that young people are leaving the church is that churches are not safe places to express doubts. Mm -hmm. That really distresses me. Um, churches and families um, and Christian schools ought to be places where it's okay to ask questions, where it's okay to express a doubt uh, and so forth. Look at John the Baptist, who right. expressed hesitations right. about who Jesus was when he was uh, in prison. Right. And if, if he has questions, then certainly we all have questions. And, and I think we have to validate that in people and, and, and not freak out when, when a young person comes home from college and says, I'm not sure I believe anymore. Um, not to panic, but to say, you know what, it's okay to have questions. Uh, but you know what, the Old Testament and the New Testament both say if we sincerely uh, seek God, we're gonna find him. So ask the questions, but do what John the Baptist did. You know, John the Baptist, when he's in prison and he's got questions, what does he do? He sends friends to go ask Jesus, are you the one we've been waiting for to wait for somebody else? And does Jesus freak out? No. He says, go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. So in other words, go back to John and tell him about the evidence you've seen with your own eyes that convinces you that I am the one I claim to be. So I would say to young people who have questions, it's okay to have questions. Don't, you know, don't feel like you know, you're going to flush your faith away because you have a doubt. Um, work through that. Pursue answers like John did. And these days, we have a proliferation of excellent resources on Christian apologetics or evidence for the faith. We didn't have that back when I was an atheist and investigating this stuff. There wasn't hardly anything out there. It was really hard, especially before the internet, to right. do that kind of right. research. But these days, there's one, there are wonderful resources at every level, beginning level, intermediate level, advanced level, for people that really want to pursue answers. So I tell people, um, Distill down, what is your question? What is your doubt? Get it down on paper, write it out, because sometimes it becomes this vague and coate kind of mm. general disbelief, and that's not gonna help anybody. You get, what is the question? What is the doubt? Write it down, get it down, and then once you've crystallized it, you can begin to investigate both sides of the issue and read the skeptics and read the Christians. And mm. um, you know, I have confidence that anybody who does that with an open mind 
will come to the conclusion I came to, which is that the evidence is clear and compelling that, uh, that Jesus is who he claimed to be. Lee, how insightful is that? I, I want Oklahoma Christian University to be the kind of place where young people and old people can come with their questions yeah. and their doubts. Yeah. And they're not rejected, yeah. but they're encouraged and they're, they're brought to a deeper faith. And it's, I think that's so healthy because I think a, a faith that has been tested by doubt emerges as a stronger faith. Mm rather than a faith that's never been tested by doubt. You know, people who grow up in the church, right. and that's great, right. you know, um, that they have a strong faith their whole life, that's great. But I tell you, a person who wanders and has questions and doubts and then finds the answers and, and, and really solidifies their faith, often that is, it's like a broken bone, you know, that gets healed. And, it, and that place where the break was is stronger mm. than mm. it originally was. Mm. Uh, so I, I applaud you and, and um, Oklahoma Christian as being a place where people can explore these issues and, and, and really come to a resolution. We don't have to be afraid of questions as Christians. I've moderated a number of debates between Christians and atheists, and uh, I enjoy doing that because, honestly, I've never seen the Christian lose a debate. <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the debate that was held at Biola University a few years ago between William Lane Craig, one of the greatest Christian apologists, and Christopher Hitchens, one of the greatest atheists in the world, and I'll quote to you the evaluation of the atheist commentator after this fair intellectual shootout. The atheist commentator said, the Christian, William Lane Craig, spanked Christopher Hitchens like a foolish child. Wow. That's the atheist evaluation. So we have a strong faith. It stands up to scrutiny. It stands up mm. to questions. And, and we ought to allow people to pursue that so that they emerge with a faith that's stronger yet. What a blessing you are to the faith. And frankly, what a blessing you are today, speaking to our community, our students. Lee Strobel, uh, what a message. What a great story his walk to faith has been, and who's the hero behind the scenes? It's Leslie. Um, and the message for students, the message for myself, frankly, the message for parents is um, let, let's take the doubts and not be freaked out by the doubts, but let's respond to the doubts. Let's love and maintain relationship and help us all grow deeper and more mature in our faith. Lee, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you very God. much. God bless you.